MacBook Air A2141 stopped turning on and won't charge. Okay, 2141, never turn them on. Likewise, 1990s. Just open them up, take the board out, check it. Relatively clean, but it might be because it's already been inspected previously. Disconnect the battery. So we've got corrosion up here on one of the caps. Continuity checks on the NAND rails. That one's okay. Drive our PP bus. PP bus is running a bit low, 67, that's way too low. What's this cap up here? Also 67, so I wouldn't be surprised if it might be that cap or something up there. So this doesn't appear to be a NAND failure, but always presume it could be with these machines. We'll have a look at this area. It seems like the likely spot. There's a liquid. Yeah, it's a fairly unhealthy looking cap. It may not be this short run. We'll have a look at the other side of the board. There might be more damage there. Ah, yeah, okay, there's a lot of damage. This is a good example of why you should always take the board out on these machines. If I had to take a guess, I'd sooner say this cap is the one at fault. And there's probably issues with this particular part. We also have the problem here, that looks pretty nasty. Okay, that one's within specs, that's fine. Yeah, that one, or the one on the other side, I'm fairly sure the NAND should be okay. They seem okay. We'll clear up the damage we can see, and we'll go from there. No, we're still way too low, that's only 70. That's got to be up around the 1k value. So it wasn't that cap. Let's try this one up here. Nope, still the same. Could be something else elsewhere on the board entirely. But I do like to focus on where I can see the liquid damage to start with. Alright, we're looking at this area and seeing what else is on this rail. So, hmm. It's a bit concerning because basically it sort of starts implicating the V-Reg. There's a lot of other things that are on that rail but nothing close by. Just those two caps. We already removed some of these. I'm starting to think maybe the V-Reg. Before I pull that V-Reg off I am going to just check over the rest of the board and see if there's any other corrosion. But it does. Oh, there's that. Just notice that. That's not a good thing. Let's mark that so we can come back to it. Oh, uh, well, I think we found the real short issue here. <laughs> Alright, that is a very blown cap. One very angry cap. Or at least it was at one point. Now, the nature of these caps means that they really do not like having hot air put onto them, at least not the way we do it. Ideally what they want is a very slow ramp up to temperature and then removal gently. And using normal hot air is a little bit too aggressive for that. So we're just going to actually lever off this with solder and the soldering iron. This is why it's good to go check and elsewhere on the board. Let's see what our resistance is now. Well, that's certainly looking a lot healthier. But it looks like this board's got a bunch of different things going on with it, so this is... Oh, yeah. It's, this is not a good situation. Very much a case of back it up, move to a new machine, or at least keep iCloud active and backing up every... Well, every moment it can. Now, while I can clean up a lot of this, there's no guarantee it will be a lasting repair. I think realistically that should be replaced. 
we have a look at the part in question. This is it here. And that's part of the keyboard interface, it seems. Just shielding up that cap on the side there because I don't want it popping. I've already got one cap down. Okay, pin one, bottom right. Okay, we'll take this donor board one. Add a small amount of flux. Yeah, that's gone down nicely. Just saw it center itself. It's good. It's a good replacement. Now, as for this, it's a tough call. The real problem we're going to face here is that even if we put it down nice and easy, which is fine, we can use soldering, trying to extract one is going to be a little bit more difficult. This is the sort of thing where I really should have more spare parts of these. I should really have stock of these particular type capacitors so I don't have to try and draw them from a donor board. On the grand scale of things, that is on PV bus. There are so many other capacitors on there doing their job of decoupling that rail that we can afford to lose that particular one this time. It's going to pose less of a risk in operational terms than trying to transfer an existing one and hoping that we haven't internally damaged it. So note to self, make sure I buy a whole bunch more of these capacitors. Now this one here I definitely want to clean up. I want to do a bit of, yeah, just a bit of cleaning up in general over here. It looks a bit messy. Uh, we certainly want to replace that one too. Uh, There's a 1025 603 size. Very common on this board. Just notice we've still got lots of bits of damage up here too. So not over yet. We have this capacitor here to replace as well. Again, this is another 1025-603. So let's look at these two parts here and see what we can do about them. Looks like maybe a resistor and a cap there. Might drop some flux on them and give them a little bit of a boil up. This is not going to reflow them. You can see it fizzing now. Uh, these are actually particularly special one. This is a thermistor, this top one. Meaning as the temperature changes, its resistance changes. And this here is a bias resistor. And again, we'll just transfer them from a donor. You can see why I thought that might have been a capacitor initially because it's got that little bit of a brownish tinge. But it is not the case. We will take one at a time. Should be able to just get this down with the hot air. Okay, we don't need to fully, fully reset it. We'll wait until we got the second one down. We do have a little bit more flux. Uh, tombstoned it. All right, I think we'll leave it at that. A little crooked, but technically working. Remember, we're working very close to the NAND, so we really do not want to put undue amounts of heat around here. They look ugly, but I think they're okay. And they're just high frequency noise suppression type capacitors. So I'm not too worried about that. I'll be more worried about what's going on over here. You have all the muck. But at the same time, I don't want to rinse more muck into there. I try to do a dry brush out. Check out resistances. 
800 climbing on the 2v5 is good. 1k climbing on PV bus is good. So I think at this point we are good to do a data recovery. Okay, let's put this back in the case and see how we go. Power. It's looking promising. It's probably flat. Oh no, here it comes. We've got to win. Well, we are actually flat. We're at 0% here, so better watch to see if the charge comes up. I think there's a problem with the cable. Glitched when I touched it. Yeah, we've definitely got a bad cable or something going on down here. If I put pressure on it, it changes. Doesn't appear to be anything specifically wrong in there. Cable itself technically looks fine. Right, so here we go, we've got a new flex in there. That's looking better. We've got a sustained 300 and that should pick up now. So yeah, bad battery data flex. Doesn't take much. A little bit of damage somewhere or just, yeah, you really don't know. Sometimes they look perfect, but they're damaged. Okay, here we go. We've got the classic staircase occurring. That's what you want to see. This machine is fixed. The customer's going to be happy. They're going to get their data. What they do after that, up to them. But they get their data, and that's what we wanted. Thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.